what's going on everybody I have no idea what episode number this is going to be I have no idea if I'm even going to let this get published but here's what's going on I had a thought and sometimes I like to explore those thoughts knowing that there's potentially an audience someone who will listen to this I do some of my best thinking when I'm talking to someone and so that's kind of what this episode is going to be it's going to be my attempt to I guess pretend that there's someone on the other end well, there is if you're listening to it but rather pretending there's someone right there instead of the camera someone is talking to me giving me their understanding or, or expressing that they don't understand this potentially weird thought that I'm going to talk about. This is probably the worst setup I could ever do for an episode. I'm sorry about that, but I'm just going to get into it. One more thing, if you like coherent and concise and polished Jeremy, you may not like this episode. This feels like it's going to be a rambly one. Some of you like that. I've actually received feedback that some of you like when I'm more off the cuff. Those of you will really enjoy this one, maybe. All right. I find that when the same idea is presented in two or three different ways within a, a short period of time, it warrants exploring. And the idea that keeps popping up just over the last week is the idea of service. This is not going to be a religious discussion. This is not going to be some kind of political discussion. I mean service in the broadest sense of the term. There's some other podcasts that I've listened to recently that talk about service. Um, movies, TV shows, just this idea of serving keeps popping up. And I thought, what does service look like in the context of martial arts? It's not something I've ever considered, and I'm not sure why. So what is service? Service is the idea that you're doing something for someone else. We could get into this pretty deep philosophical discussion about whether service for someone else is ultimately for your own benefit because it makes you feel good. I, I've heard that argued pretty intelligently in the past. But I don't want to go there because I don't think it matters for the discussion that I want to have. I think there are some examples of service that are pretty concrete within the bounds of martial arts. Quite often we have individuals who will start a martial arts school because they feel called to pass on the knowledge that was shared with them. Sometimes those schools are operated at a break-even or a minimal profit. Some of them are knowingly run at a loss. Some of them are done as nonprofits or very inexpensively. There are a lot of different ways that that. I'm going to momentarily break the law here. Okay, good. And check the directions of where I'm going. Uh, Alright. But that also is not the place that I want to go with this, this idea of service, because I think it's so much broader. When I think about service... I think about it as a mindset more than an action. If I serve you, I could serve you a meal. I could serve you, here's how you do that form. And that's a bit more transactional. It's a bit more of a fixed time frame. It's shorter. And that's pretty easy to do. I can serve you by teaching you something, and I don't have to enjoy it. Now, the more I do enjoy it, more than likely, the better the job I'm going to do. I think we all 
have had examples, whether it's in martial arts or other areas of life, where someone has taught us something and they didn't like doing it, they didn't want to do it, and thus the end result or the effort they put in, the energy they put in, was lacking. And then of course you have the flip side, people who enjoy teaching or serving, sharing, and they're much better as a result. But what about service as a mindset in the martial arts? Let's take the extreme example, because I find those are easier for me to think through. What if, from here on, everything I did as a martial artist was under the umbrella, the guise of service. When I go to class, I consider myself serving the instructor and the other students. If I go to a competition, I'm serving, if I'm competing, I'm serving the tournament promoter, I'm serving the referees, I'm serving fellow competitors. If I'm a referee, I'm serving those competing, the tournament promoter. If I go to a seminar, I'm serving the other attendees, the host, the guest instructor. Not really a difficult concept to wrap your head around. And certainly you could do that in that way. Half a mile, turn left onto US 2 West. If someone was really inclined, you could probably go back in time. You wouldn't have to go back in time. You could pull up a map and you could probably figure out where I am right now. Anyway. <sighs> But I think... The next left onto US 2 West. Taking the next left onto US 2 West. If you also don't enjoy the voice from Google Maps, you will not enjoy this episode. Alright, hold on. Let me check my... There we go, bam. Alright, good. Continue on US 2 West for five miles. This is the downside to me recording these episodes in the car. And especially... Where I'm headed now, it's all twisty turning. Let me just get my thoughts back on track. Okay. It's pretty simple, I think, to just look at individual actions or short, compartmentalized actions. I go to class as a student and I consider myself serving the other students and the instructor. How is that different than me attending class in a selfish way? I think that's the alternative, right? If you're not, if you're serving others, the opposite of serving others is serving yourself. The, the word selfish is tends to be battered around as a negative, but certainly you have to be selfish at times. You have to take care of yourself. The cliche example of you've got to put your air mask on if the pressure drops in an airplane before you put on the mask for someone else because you're no good to anybody else dead, right? So I, I think we all can get behind that. You've got to do some things for yourself. And I'd say that 99% of martial arts students are attending class for selfish reasons. They're doing it because they want to learn, they're doing it because they want to get in shape, they're doing it because they want their kids to go, they're doing it because they, it's a good excuse to get out of the house, whatever. They're doing it for their own benefit in some way. And when you're doing that, your accountability is only to yourself. So if you go in and you're having a rough day, maybe you slack off a little bit. Maybe instead of delivering 100% of what your capacity is, you're delivering 60 or 75 or even 90, maybe 40.
but if I'm there for the for other people, if I'm there to serve, maybe I'm one of the higher ranks in the school, as I am personally, and I want to set a good example in the front row for everyone behind me. I want I want to make sure that I'm modeling technique and behavior that the other students will be able to look to as as an aspirational example of technique, of conduct. If I'm serving the instructor, I'm there ahead of time and maybe I help clean. Maybe I am offering as much positive energy just in the way I carry myself during class as I can. Those of you who have ever taught, especially if you've taught long term, know how horrible it is to teach a class that has just no energy, you know, or, or negative energy, you know, everybody's just kind of blah that day. So having at least one person there who's just really fired up and excited to be there can be the difference between a great class and a terrible class. And if I'm serving others in my attendance of class, the fact is I'm going to get more out of it. Which is good. But I think everybody else is going to get more out of it too. I think the irony is that by putting others first, in the way I train. Half a mile, turn left onto Main 156 West. Oh, we're turning from 2 to 156. Oh, you also know I'm in Maine now, if you didn't. So the irony that I'm gonna get more out of it by putting others first the next left onto Main 156 West. Eight hundred feet, turn left onto Main 156 West, Main 41 South. Take the next left onto Main 156 West, Main 41 South, then turn right onto Main 156 West. <laughs> Now is there magic in the idea that your martial arts training is service to others? The next right onto Main 156 West. I don't I don't think it's that dramatic. I think there's Continue an on element. Main 156 West for three quarters of a mile. I think there's an element of that in our culture, we tend to partner up, we tend to, in many schools, offer our time to our instructors or higher ranks. In a lot of schools, it's considered an honor to clean, you know, just to sweep the floor before class. So I think there's a lot of that already there. But I wonder A quarter if, mile, turn left to stay on Main 156 West. If you are listening to the audio version of this, you can't see the dirty faces that I'm making. I've probably picked the worst time during my drive to record this, but I just, I needed to work this stuff out. The next left to stay on Main 156 West. Continue on Main 156 West for two miles. It wasn't even a left, silly Google. All right, so it's in the culture. And if, if we focus on it, is there a better result? 
if I change my priority in my martial arts training from it's about me, it's about me getting better, it's about me becoming a more well-rounded human being, personal growth, yada, 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 to I'm going to go to class because I will make others training better, I will help my instructor, other people will benefit from my presence, my energy, my focus, my dedication. So what changes? I'm less likely to skip class. I'm more likely to practice the things that I don't do well. I'm more likely to have a good attitude. Are there negatives? I may work on the things that are important for other people's development. Half a mile, turn left to stay on main 156 west. Or things that my instructor wants me to work on that maybe I'm not as interested in. Maybe my self-exploration of martial arts or my, I guess, experimentation of my own personal martial arts the next left to stay on main 156 west then turn right to stay on main 156 west flavor hey you know what i can do i can turn this way down sorry <laughs> i typically play music while i'm driving so the, the stereo is up at the level that it was when i had music actually it's a podcast so yeah i guess there there are some minor negatives in there but Pretty negative. So what do I do with this? If I see overall benefits in treating my martial arts training as service, the second right to stay on main one fifty six others. Yes. I did warn you, this would be a rambly episode. So I'll roll back my last question. What do I do with this information? If I understand and agree, for the most part, and in most circumstances, that my martial arts training, and the world in general, is better served by treating my martial arts training as service to others, and I'm going to be more likely to go to class and all that. Okay, what do I do with that? 
is it just a mindset shift or is there something tangible I don't think I need to tell anybody in fact I think telling others is contradictory because if I want others to know well do other people need to know I don't think anybody needs to know I think in telling other people it, it looks like you're you're looking for something you're, the you're, next left onto main 156 west you're looking for a pat on the back continue on main 156 west for six miles okay, let me get six miles on truck. I don't need a pat on the back to do it because that's that's the opposite of service right true service is done without something expected in return but here's the here's the big piece here's the piece that I wanted to get to because in my initial thoughts before I started recording I think this may not be there we go hopefully that's a better angle sorry if it turned too much Is there time when my service mindset is going to give me something that my selfish mindset can't? And I think yes. One of the subjects that's come up occasionally on the show that comes up far more behind the scenes. I have these conversations with guests often. Is the idea of boredom or taking a break, things like that. We've, we've tackled that on the show. And when I think about the people who express that they, they never get bored, that they never take a break, the ones that have felt that way for a long time, I, I believe universally, have their own school. And when I think about those people and their personalities, at least the ones that I can really dig into who they are, they do it because they love it. They feel, I think, responsibility. Longevity in the martial arts is that you're serving others. When I think about this show, I consider it a service to the community. Yes, there's absolutely commercial reasons. I, this show started for commercial purposes. But the only time shows have failed to come out, the one there were two. Two times that a Monday show did not come out. I will... It was a Thursday show. Two episodes did not come out. Uh, one was leading up to the Whistle Kick Martial Arts Showdown in 2016 because I was so overwhelmed. And then there was a technical issue this past February 2018 where some recorded episodes were defective. We had to re-record. But I was away. I was on vacation and didn't know with enough lead time to do anything about it. So we just didn't do an episode. But it's really easy for me to find the motivation to do these episodes. Now, I won't lie. There are times where there are other things I would rather do. I'm not going to say that service to others means that the actions suddenly become your greatest desire. But I think 
think it helps affect the priority of your actions. I've done four episodes in a day. Maybe not four. I've definitely done three interviews in a day. I don't like doing three interviews in a day. It's too much. But I've done it because that's what needed to be done. Excuse me, to accommodate the guests that we wanted on the show to bring to you. I think I've taken this as far as I can. But it's something I'm going to continue thinking about. And I would love for any of you out there who are still listening or watching to let me know what your thoughts are. Is there something here? Am I just stumbling onto something that everyone else knows? I don't know. This has never been articulated to me. The idea of martial arts training, the motivation for it being service to others. Yeah, let me know. 